Hi, and welcome to this episode of Beer to Whiskey. In my ongoing quest to spread the gospel of good taste, today I find myself in Delray Beach, Florida. I'm at uh, Saltwater Brewery, and it's sort of on the west side of town. And uh, we're here, we're going to drink a little beer, have a little fun. I'm Russ Heaps, sitting uh, to my left here, uh, riding shotgun on this shoot, uh, is my good buddy, Michael Bongo Hahn. Hi, everybody. Who I've been uh, uh, swilling beer with for far too many years to even, <laughs> to even talk about. 27 years. <laughs> And uh, before we get into, uh, into introducing um, our guest, uh, I just want to do a little shameless self-promotion here. And uh, Bongo, what do we want the, the folks to do? We want people to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. That's right. So you see the little uh, thumbs up there at the bottom of your screen? Click on that um, if you like what you see. Hang on to the end of this thing, and you're going to have a couple of more videos you can watch. And those uh, also a round icon, the beer to whiskey icon. If you want to subscribe, click on that, please. And that'll have you all signed up. A new video comes out at noon East Coast time every Thursday. Whew. That was a lot. Wow, man. That was a lot. Um, with us today, we have uh, Dustin Jeffers, and he's the operations manager here. Um, and, uh, and actually, that's just the fancy way of saying one of the owners. And uh, so, Dustin, we appreciate the invite. We are, we are happy to be here. Um, tell me a little bit about the background of the, of the brewery, how this thing gets started. Uh, so in December, we're going to be five years old. Um, so we started end of the year in 2013. Um, we're all... All the founders are very passionate about the ocean, um, so that's why we called ourselves Saltwater. Um, so with that, we wanted to do something besides just make great beer. We wanted to have a purpose behind the brewery. And since we were all boaters, fishermen, surfers, uh, one of it was giving back and raising awareness to environmental charities, uh, ocean charities, and just conservation all around. Uh, so that's kind of the base of what we started the brewery on. Make good beer, plus give back and raise awareness. And so it's you and, and who else are our uh, owners? So the co-founders are uh, me, uh, Chris Gove, who's our president, uh, Pete Agerty, who does all our artwork on all our cans around the brewery, designs the shirts, and Bo Eaton, who was our head of uh, sales and distribution when we started. How'd you guys all get hooked up? Uh, so Chris's dad owns this barn. Uh, he's had it for a long time. And uh, they always wanted to do something cool in here. Uh, Chris was in San Diego, so breweries were all around, and it was kind of in his face. Right. Uh, they were popping up all over the place. And I moved down here to go to grad school at Florida Atlantic and was in Pete's art studio. Uh, so Pete actually married my cousin, so pretty much we're family. Wow. You know? uh, they dated for nine years before they got married, <laughs> so he was part of the family. Uh, we were homebrewing in the art studio, and Chris's dad came to have Pete do a big for lease sign on the side of the barn. Saw we're homebrewing, and that just ignited what they wanted to do anyway. Uh, so, started the brewery. I finished grad school, uh, and yeah, we dropped our everything we were doing and started a brewery together. Wow, that's a great beginning. This used to be a, like a feed and seed or something, didn't yeah, it? One so point? originally, uh, it was built in the '50s, and it was a uh, Delray's farm and feed supply. Uh, so I used to get I used to get feed and alpha feed and alfalfa from awesome. this building in the mid to late 80s probably yeah we yeah. have pictures of like the high school doing their class photos in front of here people said they used to get jeans here so it was originally that and then it turned into a uh, antique furniture store and then it was us yeah, it was so the... it's kind of cool all this wood is dade county pine which is now a protected species because uh, it's really good for construction um, right and our bar is actually the first floor of the barn uh, so it's kind of a one-of-a-kind priceless bar wow that's great. <laughs> that is pretty cool. It's not fun to work with. It's <laughs> it's, it's messed a up a bunch of drill bits and stuff. It's, it's a little, it's a little difficult, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it lasts forever, yes. which is the nice thing. Yeah. Uh, just, just as a, a disclaimer, I lived in Delray Beach for, well, I've lived in, I lived in South Florida for about 25 years, in Delray specifically for probably about 15 or 16 of those years. So I... That's how I remembered it was a feed and seed store because that's what it was when I moved here in the mid '80s. Were you were you one of the guys actually brewing the beer? Yep. Yeah, uh, I started off as 
guess assistant brewer. Uh, we had a brewmaster um, when we first opened, and he's since left. Um, so yeah, I was one of the. Are you still brew. Are you still brewing? Uh, I brew not as much as I'd like to, um, but I still brew when we have double brews or someone's out. Um, I do 99% of the recipe formulation. Um, we have a great head brewer, Justin. Um, he used to work at Stone, went to Lion Google, then he was a senior brewer at Brooklyn. Uh, wow. So the beer's in good hands. Um, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, Brooklyn, yeah. And then I get to come in and do some weird stuff every once in a while. Which we're going to be doing uh, special concoctions. <laughs> yeah, you're the mad doing, scientist. Yes, excellent. <laughs> um, we're going to have a lot more uh, interesting, fun beers in the future. Uh, we're Great. working on a couple things. Well, we've started doing something. You're going to be so so happy with this, awesome. Dustin. We've started doing something we call the lightning round. All right. <laughs> and I'm going to ask you uh, five questions, and the idea is that uh, uh, we get them. We get the questions to ask and answered in 30 seconds. All right. Uh, and if you don't make it, Bongo's got to chug a beer. So it's <laughs> just <laughs> just <laughs> fail miserable. That's <laughs> I'm gonna take really long to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are are you ready to start the timer, sir? I am ready to start the timer. Okay. Well, you have to tell us. You have to tell us when to go. How much time do we have? 30 seconds. Wow, that's not much time. I know. All right, uh, let's do the, let's, oh, all right, now we got 30 seconds. Hold on, hold on. Five, four, three, two, one, start. What was your first craft beer? Uh, Arrogant Pastor, Stone. What is your favorite style of beer? Um, barley wine. Oh, yeah, barley wine is life, definitely. Wow. Yeah. What is your favorite saltwater beer? Uh, Maris La Ciada, which is our barley wine. What's your go-to beer if you're somewhere and you can't get a saltwater beer? How much time do I got left? <laughs> you, got, <laughs> you got 20 seconds. Um, if they have it, uh, top three beers are Orval, uh, Philadelphia Pale Ale from Yards, and uh, Allagash White, which actually I can only get one down here. <laughs> <laughs> which Corleone brother would you rather be locked in a closet Five, with? Sonny, four, Fredo, three, or Michael? Two. Sonny. Whoa! He got out of the mouth. <laughs> Well, there you have it, the lightning <laughs> round. The lightning round. Barley wine is kind of as a, uh, you know, that's that's sort of like your one and done kind of. That's kind of a one and done sort of beer. Oh, uh, no, I'm seasoned. Uh, yeah. All right. So I actually poured you our barley wine. Oh, Excellent. okay. Good. Are we allowed to taste any of this stuff yet or yeah, not? What's, what's the, what's um, the uh, what, tell us what we have in the flights first. Cool. Uh, so outside of the flight, it, the lightest one is Bonafide Blonde. It's our Belgian single. I'm almost positive this is my wife's favorite when we come yeah, here. Yeah, it's uh, the one I drink most often. Um, it's one of my babies. I love Belgians, um, wow. and Belgian single is one of my favorite styles. So pretty simple malt base, and we really let our Belgian yeast that we use for most of our Belgian beers kind of be the forefront of the beer. That's we beautiful. We don't want the malt hops to get in the way. What's the alcohol? Six uh, percent. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's a very light, very crisp, but it's still got flavor. It's not, yeah. you know, it's not yeah. your typical. So this is one of the beers that um, we'll be brewing more. So we're getting more tanks outside, which will more than double our production. Uh, last year we hit our capacity, and we pretty much brewed three beers all last year. Uh, Screaming Reels, Sea Cow, and House Ale. And it took up all our tank space. Uh, wow. So Screaming Reels is in all the publics throughout the state. Uh, Easily your most popular beer, right? Yeah, it's almost 90% of my And it's a, it, honestly, I mean, for I'm not a big IPA fan. Mm -hmm. It is a, it is a, you know, IPAs got to the point where it's like, you know, triple hopping and quadruple hopping and, yeah. you know, to the point where it's like, I don't even want to try anything anymore. But it's a really nice, very good, it's not crazy hoppy. It's got a great flavor. It's really easy to drink, and Thank I you. truly, truly enjoy it. That's so. what we, that's what this is, yeah. right? That's that one. Um, and then Sea Cow is on uh, every Carnival cruise line. Uh, we actually replace Guinness on every ship. Wow! Uh, so Sea Cow, we crank a lot out of. Um, you don't always see it down here, but it's a lot. Who does who does your marketing? Because I I need some help on uh, some things. <laughs> wow, that's <laughs> great, man. Actually, Kate does all. Is that right? Yep. Wow, that's uh, that's impressive. Yeah. And Sea Cow is my go-to. Like I I told him earlier, it's just. Phenomenal, and, phenomenal. And that's what this is? Yep. Uh, no, Sea Cow is... Sea uh, Cow is th oh, this, this one, end? The last one. This one. Yep. 
Uh, so it's a milk stout. Uh, we have it based on a Pilsner water profile. So when people try it, it's not super heavy and thick like most stouts. Right. Uh, it's our second core beer, and we live in Florida. Uh, and a lot of our stuff, we kind of market it towards beach, boat, pool. So a heavier, thicker milk stout's not really what we want to brew. So we messed with the water pro. Well, actually, we didn't mess with the water at all. Right. Kept it plain, and that's what our milk stout's based on. So it's a little more chuggable than most milk stouts. Sorry, you said chuggable. I about <laughs> spilled my beer. <laughs> um, so yeah, now we have uh, 80 barrels coming in, and we're working on something else to a somewhat pilot system. So once that comes in, we'll be able to brew a lot more different styles of beer, which we're excited about. Wow. I don't know what that is, but that's good. Uh, so that's our Sunburnt Monk. Um, so right now, uh, actually kegging is our Don't Get Confused. It's a Belgian triple that's 10.5%. So we wanted to build our Belgian yeast strain up a little. So it went from our 6% bona fide blonde. Next beer we brewed was our 8% sunburnt monk. So we use this really cool grain called Best Red X. And it's a base grain that makes it this color. So it's it's, 90, and it's easy drinking, man. Yeah. Holy cow, that's 96% that of this Best Red and then 4% uh, wheat. And that's all the malt that's and it's And did you say it was 10%? Uh, no, this one is 8%. 8%. Uh, don't get confused, it's 10 and a half. So we wanted to give our Belgian yeast some... That, and that's not your only confused beer, right? Uh, yes, yeah. so when we, <laughs> um, when we had more room, we used to do this event called Mass Confusion, where we would release Don't Get Confused and then do a bunch of different variants on it. Uh, so Confused in the Morning is one of the most popular. Uh, we do uh, Belgian waffles, uh, chocolate, and uh, maple syrup. And it gets and coffee, uh, so it has this like breakfast and a glass. Wow, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, and then monk mosa, uh, we'll split <laughs> monk it with mosa. orange juice, which is great for <laughs> Saturday mornings. For instance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you know what they say: if uh, if you don't drink in the morning, there's no way right. you can drink all day. Can't drink all day if you don't start early. Uh, so you're drinking Maris. Um, so it's called Maris the Lost Sea Otter. Because uh, the base grain, actually all the grain, is Maris Otter, uh, which is the only way to make a barley wine. You have to have Maris Otter grain in it. Uh, so Maris is a pale, like, English floor malt. Uh, so it comes out, when it comes out of the mash done, it looks like scream. Uh, bring it over to the kettle, and then we boiled it for five hours, and it came out like this. Wow, so you're so essentially caramelizing that, it? Yep, all that caramelization of the malt. That's fantastic. Plus burning off a lot of... A lot of, right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is. So how, what, so what's your re, what's your reduction rate? I mean, when you, by right, the time it comes back, a, did yeah, you? We lost a couple of barrels. But it's worth it, right? Yeah, in the yeah, long that's run. That's the whole point of it. That's yeah. fantastic. Uh, so a lot longer brew day, uh, and then next year we're gonna get some different barrels, and uh, I'd really like to do just a bourbon, a cognac, and then a port barrel. And do you do any kind of compensation for that amount of flavor? Because you're. You're packing all that flavor then into uh, a smaller package. No, yeah, that's the we build the recipe right, it's to. Beautiful. Uh, be a lot higher alcohol. That is pretty good. Barely any sparge on it, so. And can I just say, I mean, obviously beer is a is a craft and an art, and but there is so much engineering and so much forethought that you guys have to put into it. Yep. You know, with uh, God forbid you screw up a batch and you got to dump something. Yeah. Has that ever happened here? Uh, yes, we've had to, uh, not because of infection or anything like that. Uh, we got hit by lightning one time. Oh, wow. And one of our tanks crashed right at the early parts of fermentation. Oh, so no. So all the yeast fell asleep, and yeah, that one had to go. But did you guys think about trying to salvage it somehow? I have a barrel salvaged uh, that I threw in and let um, all our wild yeast and bacteria kind of, I create a starter, threw it in there. Okay. And let that start going. Because um, we have a bunch of spontaneous beer uh, in barrels away from the brewery. Uh, so I have a barrel in there. Uh, Man, I love what you guys are it's doing. It's interesting. Um, I don't know. It, I may use it. I may not. Uh, it's two years now. So give it another year, see how it's going, and then maybe reuse that barrel for something else. So, so do you have a timer set? So you're, you're going to know to go oh, yeah. in there and take a look? Yeah. Yeah, we pull nails on those every once in a while and test them out. That's great. Yeah. That's really, really great. Now that you're expanding your your uh, production capability, mm -hmm. is there a beer that you guys have not been doing that is like okay, this is 
this is the first thing I want to do. Yeah, probably our next beer that will be in cans, um, pushed you're, out to the market. You're not giving away any secrets here now? Uh, no. Okay. We told people it's one of, we actually just canned um, it last week, it was a uh, passion pit. Uh, so it's a 4.2% light golden ale uh, that we ferment with uh, real passion fruit. Oh. Uh, so another good beach, easy drinking beer. Excellent. Um, so that's probably going to be the first one we put in full package. And then having Bonafide on tap all the time is one of our goals. There's uh, a brewery in Fort Worth called uh, RAR mm -hmm. uh, Brewery. And they have a summer, very drinkable summer beer called Adios Pantalones, <laughs> which I think is one of the best names I've ever heard. One of the best names I've ever heard for a, for a beer. That should, that should be a band name or an album, <laughs> an album name. <laughs> but, it's, but it's the same thing. They're in Houston and it's a, or in, okay. in Fort Worth. It's 120 degrees there. Adios and, Pantalones. Yeah, Adios Pantalones. And it's, not, and it's not based on the alcohol content. It's based on the fact that it's just a summer drinking beer that you would drink at the, at the swimming hole. Right. And... You're going to drop your drawers and jump in the there you, there swimming hole. There you go, hole. man. So, yeah. I'm all about it. Yeah. So, so the beer community itself, you know, it, uh, you got East Coast brewers, you got West Coast brewers, now you got brewers across the country. And I'm, uh, you and I just spoke, and obviously you travel for, for work to go look at whatever is coming out next and all that kind of stuff. When you go to, let's say you, 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 you fall into town and you're going to go to the local brewery that you know is down the street from you. What are the things that you look for in a fellow brewery? What are the things that you go in and say, you know, what, what are you looking for, I guess, when you go to a good brewery? What are you looking for to find a good beer? I usually try their lightest, least hopped, kind of most basic beer first to see how clean it is. Um, so if they're clean and their base low alcohol beer tastes fine, it's harder to brew one of those than a 11% double IPA right. or Imperial Stout because that one you have nothing to hide behind. Um, so yeah. always try that, see how well their whole process works. And then um, I'll usually go with whatever the bartender tells me. You always gotta trust. Right, right, what's your, what's your number one seller, that kind of thing? Yep. Yeah. Um, I'll try that and then if they have a barley wine, I'm going for that. <laughs> <laughs> And now, do you guys also do saisons and sour beers? Uh, we don't do as many saisons as I'd like. Uh, that's going to be one of the things. We're or be doing or right. that my wife would like. My yep. wife loves saisons, loves the sours, and it's getting harder and harder to find. And I and she's like, I can't. You know, you know we call around just trying to find a. Uh, you know, I've got to go to a specialty store to find just bottles of it. Yep. And she wishes that more of the locals would. I said, look, they don't sell it because it. <laughs> <laughs> But I, yeah. but I know people who just absolutely love sour beers, and yeah. I, I don't get it. But like I said, I'm not you know I'm not the judge and jury for everything. Yeah, I don't I don't get them either. And uh, I've I've gotten to the point where uh, I can appreciate a saison, mm -hmm. but the sour thing I'm st I'm still not getting. And uh, but boy oh boy, there you know, most of the time if you go in and ask a brewer what they want to brew that they're not brewing, sour will come up. Almost every really every time. Yep, it's amazing. That's they all want to do it. They some of them are scared to do it because you know it's all the bacteria and there's all kinds of crazy stuff that goes on with it, and you got to be careful with it. But yeah, that's almost everyone wants to at least try it. Try and then the and other thing it. I've seen in the last let's say three to five years are guys who brew a beer. They'll get a flavor, uh, and then they'll uh, wooden keg it, mm -hmm. right? Either wine, either whiskey, either bourbon. Are you guys doing any of that? Uh, so right now we don't have any clean barrels at the brewery. Uh, so all of the barrels I have have a different spontaneous fermented beers in them. So what I do- And when you say spontaneous beers, yeah. explain to the people what you're uh, talking so about. So we didn't pitch any yeast at all into them. Uh, so a lot of it is runoff from some of our high alcohol beers. Uh, so don't get confused. Um, there's still so much sugar left in that malt when we're bringing it over from the mash onto the kettle that we can make a small beer out of it. Um, so with that, we'll keep running the sparge, collect more of that wort, and after Don't Get Confused is done in the kettle, we'll bring that extra wort over, boil it, uh, throw a couple hops in, and then uh, one of our 10-barrel fermenters that I have off to the side, 
Um, I leave it open, throw a cheesecloth over the manway, and manually cool it. Uh, so I call it our hot ship, because uh, in Florida we could never have a cool ship. Right. Um, so manually cool it, and the next day rouse that tank and throw it into barrels and let it just ferment. So everything that's in the barn. Uh, so it used to be a farm to feed supply, so there's a bunch of wild yeast and bacteria floating around there. Uh, we'll let it just start eating away. That's amazing. And uh, put it in barrels and push off to the side. So it's actually very advantageous for you guys that this used to be a, a farm yeah, feed store. Yeah. yeah, we have this very cool, um, almost like star fruit characteristic uh, to our spontaneous. That's dish. amazing. Uh, so I actually emptied some of the barrels last week. Uh, so Saturday and that's pu literally purely happenstance that you guys happen to be in this building to start with. Yep. yep. So that's kind of my uh, side pet project. I love that. Yeah. Everything's separate. Every mad scientist kids. should have his own yeah. pet projects. Well, when you get when you get here at five thirty in the morning, you got to have something to do, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> when I when I uh, was talking to Dustin about coming in and, and doing this shoot, uh, I said, you know let's do it in the morning and he's like yeah I'm here at 530 come on down <laughs> it's easier to get worked on exactly. When, exactly when the phone isn't ringing yeah. yeah the what was your in college what did you drink when you were still drinking domestic beers what were you drinking uh, I wasn't I was, oh really yeah. you never you just yeah. blew right by those yeah uh, so Underground. Miller High Life, right here. Hey, hey, this hey, guy hey, right hey, here. hey, hey. I was Life. originally, well, that's, that's my, I'm in Florida. What am, what am I supposed to drink? Actually, that's a lot. I used to drink Rolling Rock when it was back in the day. Yeah. Um, so I'm from South Jersey originally, so uh, Rolling Rock is what we drank the most. Yeah, I was born in Pennsylvania, and when I was going to college, Rolling Rock was cheap. Mm -hmm. You could find it. There was... Ertl's 92 that was done down in Kentucky somewhere that was even less expensive. But, uh, you know, you, we, used to, we used to drink a lot yeah. of Rolling Rock. We used to drink in college. We drank Old Milwaukee, $2 a pitcher. Rolling Rock was like, that was high That was high uh, highfalutin beer, man. That was $5 a pitcher. <laughs> that for was import. 64 was ounces of Rolling Rock? $5? <laughs> I was lucky, though. Undergrad, uh, I went to UConn, uh, uh -huh. so I could get Allagash White. Whenever I wanted. Wow. Um, so I drank kids a lot today, of that. huh? Yeah. Yeah. Plus, uh, <laughs> the next town over, Will Manic, there's a brew pub uh, that's still there. Uh, so we used to go there and drink. Um, and then my six months in between undergrad and grad school, I moved back home. So Philly was right there, and that's where I learned how to drink. So you can go amongst and get blind pig or finding whenever you want. So speaking of school, so you, so you. Went to FAU for grad school. Yep. Did your degree have anything to do uh, with? No, I went for speech pathology. No. Is kidding. that yeah. right? Yeah. Did you ever actually get do that as a career at all? Uh, I did it before I graduated, um, a lot. So, uh, summer schools. Uh, my mom's an uh, ABA trainer, so and, uh, she works with uh, handicapped kids. Uh huh. Um, so I would get dragged to summer school if I didn't have hockey camp. Uh, so I used to help in her classes, and then as I got older, around middle school, high school, I helped with the speech pathologist there. So I'd follow her around. She's now my mentor. Excellent. Um, so yeah, I already had that career before I graduated, so it's the next career. By the time I finish this, you can probably help me with my speech. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if everything goes well. Yeah. <laughs> now you guys have kind of become uh, a, a, a very... A, a, a nice little pillar in our community, right? Everybody knows who you are. Um, talk to us about like the, the local stuff that you're doing, as far as charity events or fundraisers. I mean, I'm assuming that you guys have got a, a you guys have already built a really great name for yourselves. I'm assuming that once in a while you do something for the community. Yes. Uh, so that's one of our main goals on our mission statement. Uh, so what we want to do is raise awareness about ocean conservation. We really try to hit that. Um, we do some other stuff, but what we do the most of is charities, organizations that deal with the, the ocean and the environment. Is there anything in particular you want yeah, to talk about? So this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I've, so, been, I've been looking at that. Is that some sort of a paper product? That Yeah, we'll get to this. Uh, okay, <laughs> all right. Um, so this is what kind of blew everything out of proportion. I, I'm going to tell you right now, when I saw the, a couple of years ago, right, the, because I'm uh, kind of on the inside as far as the local beer and bar scene, the first time I saw that video, man, I was like, it was phenomenal. Yeah. It was beautifully shot, beautifully edited, 
really well put together, and I was so proud of you guys, because I, I was like, I know these guys. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, when we first started, uh, we worked with uh, three organizations, uh, CCA, which is Coastal Conservation Association, Surfrider Foundation, and Ocean Foundation. Uh, as we worked more with them, we gave them beer for their events. Uh, they had like different galas, um, silent auctions. We would help donate to them. And then we met other organizations like Billfish, uh, Moat down in the Keys, uh, Debris right. Free Ocean. And it just kept growing and growing. Started working with Gumbo Limbo down the road. Right. Um, yeah, every time we worked with another organization or charity, it grew up bigger. Uh, we started working with Four Ocean on some stuff, uh, so always have their bracelets on. Excellent. Um, and we was doing well. We were raising awareness, we were raising money. Uh, and then the whole uh, biodegradable six-pack rate happened. So how, how did, how, this is just, this is just, I love this. And who, did somebody from outside come up with the idea, or uh, you guys came up with the idea? another company, and they had this idea for uh, like a seaweed six-pack ring. We're like, well, we have all this spent grain all the time. Why is seaweed important? They said it's because it's fibrous. Well, grain's super fibrous. Uh, so from then, it blew up into our six-pack grains. That's so fantastic. Uh, so as of last month, um, we are now 100% plastic-free in all our packages. That's so great. Uh, so this stuff is made from the spent grain, wheat from the brewing process. So if it does end up in the ocean and something eats it, it's not going to hurt them. Right. Uh, we're not telling people to like throw them in the ocean. <laughs> don't don't right. feed the sea turtles with yeah. your six-pack we've, uh, we've had some interesting emails, uh, people saying that they're uh, gluten intolerant. <laughs> so now that we have these, people are going to throw it in the ocean and they can't go in the ocean anymore. And we're like, I, I oh, okay. <laughs> or if you think this is the worst thing in the ocean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably in the ocean. Like, um, we that was a couple emails. There's more than one those emails. Uh, people saying that we're going to. Please read. tell me that you post these someplace with no name no, so we can all uh, read them. I have them all saved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people are nuts. Yeah. Well, um, a few people are nuts. And I think that's part of the problem with the internet is that you're given the absolute worst case scenario as the top story and it's yeah. like, okay. The, the idea is it'd be like your seven year old kid eating Sour Patch Kids instead of Legos. Is it good for them? No. Should they be eating it? No. But it's not going to kill It's still better than Legos. Yes, better than Legos. I just think it's fascinating. I, yeah, the, the two brewers, I, I just spent uh, a lot of time down in the Florida Keys and in Isla Mirada, and there, there are two craft breweries down there. And they are using the, they're, they're still using plastic, but, but they're using the kind that fit over the... Pactex? Yeah. The, yep. the, the, so you know, that's what we were using all before this. And yeah. Pactex's great. It's 98% recycled plastic. Um, it's not super big holes, so stuff won't get caught into them, and is, they're reusable. Is, is, your, is your wife marketing this? Uh, that's Chris's wife. Oh, is Chris is the, right. Yeah. Is she marketing this? Yes, yeah, she does a lot of, she answers a lot of emails. <laughs> so, so you're getting now questions about these? Yes. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah. So hopefully this keeps spreading. Um, yeah, now it's on all our packaging. I mean, every coastal brewery should be thinking about this. Yes. If they've got a place locally that can yeah. put this together for them. Yeah. I mean, the same idea, obviously. Yeah. I don't Even know. Brewery's not on the coast, too, because if it ends up, like, on a trail. Oh, in a lake? Park, yeah, exactly. Um, it's still it's right. compostable, um, so it's safe. I'm trying to reduce plastic as much as we can. Yeah, yeah there, and there's a big thing locally, you know, obviously with local beer. If you're in the local area, there's a big move to get straws out of everything. Yeah, and Surfrider. Uh, we're trying to do a lot with them, with the plastic-free restaurants. And, um, <coughs> and I know a lot of the local bars have actually done, done away with straws. I just bought a stainless steel straw the other uh, day from my cruise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's easy. Well, we believe in everything we're pushing, um, so it's easier to be a part of it. I think it's fantastic. I absolutely it. think it's we fantastic. Really like what you guys are yeah. doing. Yep. Well, on that note. Uh, well, here, we got our last beer we didn't talk about. Oh, it's, uh, oh I'm sorry. I, I lost a, track. It's Is a, that this one? Yep. Okay. It's a collab with Devour, who's uh, right down the road from us. I so already, I road, already drank mine. This road connecting us is uh, called Congress. That's all mine. So we called it uh, Trolling on Congress. Uh, so we pretty much used every hip word in the IPA and some not hip words and put it all into one beer. So it's a black. 
double dry hopped, session, zero IBU, milkshake, IPA. New England style, too, I, so it's hazy. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Um, I like the way it tastes. I don't know what's in it, but it's good. Yeah, so it kind of messes with your mind because it's black, but you don't taste any darker chocolate right. no. into it. We did a uh, black IPA with Terrapin about two years ago, or three years ago now, and the process we used uh, added color um, to the mash, but it didn't impart any of that flavor, so right. we did it again for this beer. So, yeah, yeah, that's cool. it's really a light kind of mm -hmm. it, it doesn't it doesn't taste how it looks right exactly it's your your it takes your mind a little a little so while to click in on little it stone fruit pineapple like almost pineapple oh yeah and the too. flavors that are there are are exactly what you don't expect out of a darker beer you yeah. just expect to get you know the coffees and all the you yep. know the regular taste that you would get out of a, a porter or a stout yep because it is extremely dark i mean you can't even i can't even see light yep. through it and then you get all this flavor that you're not expecting and you're not getting any of those other flavors that you are expecting. Yeah, there's no there's no burnt or coffee or right. anything in it. It's yeah. It's, That's it's amazing. Tasty. It's tasty. Well, now on that note, we could do this all day. And we did. <laughs> and it's in it, Go, man. Hit that. Go. I, I I have one of the original cans from the original oh, awesome. canning. Nice. Still still sitting at my house. Very, very proud. So. He's a he's a hoarder. Uh, I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Cheers. Uh, Dustin, Very appreciate, uh, appreciate the invite. And uh, until next time. <laughs>